Okay. What's up, everyone? Goldie here. And here we are on uh, Monday, April 10th, about uh, about two weeks into the season so far. Uh, starting to get some, get some data on these teams, and all of it's still pretty noisy, uh, for sure. But um, getting to the second and even third time through the rotation now for some of these pitchers, uh, Patrick Corbin, Herman Marquez, for example, uh, Urias for the Dodgers, Logan Webb, uh, Scherzer, hopefully he can not give up seven homers in an inning this, this start. Um, plenty of plenty of arms on the mound here for the main. We do have a four-game uh, little turbo slate as well. Should be a five-gamer, but who knows what nonsense they're trying to pull over at DraftKings. Um the other game starts literally 25 minutes before these four, and they just don't want to put it on the slate, so that's cool. Uh, nevertheless, we're not going to really go over this, but um, I think you can, I think you can get to some different constructions here. Um, chalk probably going to be Kyle Gibson for Amber Valdez, I would guess. Um, Pavetta might pull a little ownership because Tampa does strike out. Um, a tiny bit, but certainly you're going to see it on Framber and, and Alcantara down here. But Matt Strom, decent price here at 5800 He could get into the game a little bit. Uh, Jalen Beeks, you're not playing. He's just going to open ahead of Josh Fleming. Uh, so Rowan's and Contreras, he has okay stuff, but this is not a good matchup for him, of course. He's on the barrel a little bit too much, is Contreras. So... I think you can get to some some decent offense here. Kyle Gibson, there's variance with him for sure. Now Oakland stinks; they're they're going to be pretty bad. But um, I think you could. I mean, this is a four-game slate. You can stack against Kyle Gibson; he'll be popular. So uh, they have plenty of lefties here. Decent power as well. A little bit of pop, um, but mostly you're you're playing Oakland here, hoping that they um, that that Gibson is just kind of floating to baseball a little bit. And uh, they get to him in full stacks. So Ryan Noda here from the left side, good bit of pop at first base. Um, get into him. I think that's a, that's a fine play. Certainly Tony Kemp leading off um, against righties. We like this in general. Jace has a good bit of pop against righties as well. So Jesus Aguilar is not going to strike out. Plenty of power. Um, hits righties fine. Kyle Gibson, really no... Uh, nothing outsized in terms of, you know, stuff to either side of the plate. So uh, I think you can play some Oakland. You can play some Houston for sure. Um, and you can play some sneaky Boston if they're going to get Josh Fleming down here after Beeks uh, opens. Because Beeks probably only going to go a couple innings maybe. And after that, Fleming, uh, Fleming pitches to a lot of contact. Um, and he got beat up in his first outing, which is why they're going with the opener here. Uh, they really want to minimize the, until uh, Tyler Glasnow gets back, minimize the amount, um, the number of innings that they have to give to Fleming because he pitches to way, way too much contact. Uh, so I think you can play some Miami here as well. You know, Strom not immune. Um, probably don't want to be going after the Phillies or anything like that, and probably no Pittsburgh either. So those are your really off-the-board stacks. Uh, but you can play some Baltimore, too, of course. Uh, good lineup over here. So um, really not going to go over that too in depth, that slate too in depth. Uh, but we are just going to get into the main here. Um, so an interesting pitching slate, as as I mentioned. I think we can do a bunch of things here. And, you know, we've got Darvish on the mound here at a cheap price tag. He's at just 8400 I believe. Uh, really attractive so far. We do have projections and very early ownership loaded to the site. Uh, something fishy is going on with a couple of the models. Um, and we don't even have a, an ownership number on Patrick Corbin. No matter. Like, he gets the Angels. Nobody's going to be playing him anyway. Um, I hope that nobody is considering playing him. So, um, not that that matters a whole hell of a lot, but just an illustration as to uh, the early nature of, uh, of the projections. They will change over the next several hours. So, um, keep on... You know, checking back to the uh, the site 
as we uh, as we push in updates throughout the day. Uh, but we do have Darvish and Scherzer on the mound. Uh, should be a good baseball game here. Pretty good pitching matchup. I think both of these guys have the potential to, to bounce a little bit. Neither were very good in their previous start. Certainly Darvish um, getting his first action of the season was not great. And Scherzer, he got, he got blown up by the Brewers, I believe. Um, so I think we could play play some bounce plays here uh, for these starters on the mound. Not good matchups, admittedly. Of course, San Diego and the Mets, um, two really good offenses as well. So uh, might be able to, with some other options on the mound, might be able to pivot a little bit. Certainly off of Scherzer at 10-4 again. He's, he's not cheap. Uh, Ashcraft and Bryce Elder on the mound, Cincinnati and Atlanta. I think you can get to some offense here for sure. Definitely Atlanta because Ashcraft pitches to so much contact. But guy's got gas here, and he generally spots pretty well. Um, so it's not a lot of hard contact against Ashcraft. So uh, he could be a cheaper option in very deep tournament stuff. Uh, you're not playing him cash just because he didn't strike anybody out. So it's going to be tough uh, for him to navigate the Braves kind of in general. But um, – you know, good arm over here. He can suppress for sure. And Elder on the mound. We'll get into the numbers as well. Cincinnati, just not a lot of upside offensively. Um, so Elder could be another cheap piece down here at 6,600, I believe he is. And initially, we're seeing quite a bit of ownership coming in on him. Luis Castillo and Drew Smiley. Um, you can play full correlations here of, of Seattle. We'll get into that. And Drew Smiley still, still kind of has a... Uh, a fly ball and a homer problem. So um, probably don't want to be going after the Cubs too much here. Kansas City and Texas. Grinky is going to – we're going to stack against him probably every every slate throwing 17 miles an hour or whatever. Uh, Heaney, too, I think you can you could play him, but you can also stack against him because he was dreadful and still hasn't solved the hard contact issues to righties. Coors Field, Steven Matz and Herman Marquez um, might be able to do something wild here and play Steven Matz. I really don't like it. I, I like shorting bats pretty much at every opportunity um, with right-handers that I can get, and certainly like doing it at Coors Field too. But uh, Colorado overall, very weak lineup. Um, they're going to make a little bit of contact against righties. They're a little bit right more right-handed heavy, but um, overall pretty low upside in general, even though they play all their games at Coors Field. I uh, might be able to play some mats here. No Herman Marquez for me against the Cardinals. Washington and the Angels talked about Corbin not touching him. Josie Suarez probably not getting to him either, but he's another cheap piece down here, 6,900 against an overall pretty weak lineup. Now they're coming off of Coors Field. Uh, their Coors Field series is Washington and seeing the baseball pretty well. So, um, yeah, maybe not something you're overly enthused about getting to in Josie Suarez over here. They're going to hit lefties pretty decently. Uh, even though it, it'll likely be with, um, you know, lacking some power, but they're going to be a little sticky. Milwaukee and Arizona, man, Arizona has been really good. They put up another crooked number against the Dodgers yesterday. Um, Michael Grove got torched, and Zach Gallon, very cheap here. I think this is pretty good value piece, um, and of course, at this price tag, he's way underpriced at 7,100 for his upside. So he's initially seeing heavy, heavy ownership. He'll probably be your chalk arm in the mid-range today. Um, Wade Miley on the other side. You can probably play Arizona again if you want. Dodgers in San Francisco. Should be a good pitching matchup down here tonight in um, in the Bay. Like Urias on, on first glance here. Um, and the Dodgers, I'm not sure we want to be going after them with uh, with Logan Webb, but uh, you know, they've been kind of struggling a little bit here out of the gate so um that said let's it's kind of the overall breakdown let's just kind of get into the games here and um we'll start off with san diego and the mets um as we mentioned darvish and scherzer on the mound darvish 84 good price tag for him so certainly upside to outperform at this price and i think the median projection at 16 in the early runs, it, it seems healthy. This might go up a little bit throughout the day. Um, I think this price tag is probably a, a a bit aggressive on the low side for him. So um, really do like the early projected ownership on him. And I think at, you know, an 8,400, um, you know, mid-range price tag that'll allow us to get to some offenses that we probably want to play. You can play him with Gallon if you want or something. 
I think that's a, a fine, fine sort of build. Um, but yeah, Darvish sort of still getting ramped up going into the season here, having been in the classic, not totally stretched out, and didn't go all that deep. Off the top of my head, uh, don't recall exactly how deep he went in his first outing, but I think he got hit around a little bit. Um, but if I'm wrong, you know, don't hold hold uh, hold that against me. So in any case, um, Darvish can still outperform this price tag, uh, even against a very good lineup over here against the in, in the Mets. Now we got to be kind of mindful of what's going on over here. Charlie Marte slid into uh, third base trying to steal a bag, and um, and came out of the game yesterday. Um, tweaked his neck or you know did something. Uh, I guess that's what you get for sliding head first. In any case, um, th this should probably lend itself to a little more playing time, a little more regular playing time for Tommy Pham, who's been coming off the bench. Um, we'll see what they want to do, but probably not going to see Marte today, I would assume, uh, unless it was just kind of a, a cautionary take him out and, and make sure he's good. Um, sticky lineup, though, and if we want to go after Darvish, I mean, you, sure, you, you can. Like, there's a little bit of variance with Darvish sometimes. Uh, he throws a ton of, like, he throws everything. He throws 17 pitches here, and... If he's not feeling any one or two of the pitches, it tends to snowball for him sometimes. So, for example, if he doesn't, he throws a slider most often, and if he's not really feeling it, um, yeah, that's 50% of his arsenal. Then he's got the other stuff that is really just kind of marginal value for him overall. You know, decent, like still has velocity, right? Throws 95 and has enough to to work through counts and, and keep hitters off balance with such a diverse repertoire. Uh, but if he's not feeling the slider, which is his main pitch, uh, not commanding the four seamer necessarily, he can get a little off kilter sometimes. So um, now on a full eight game slate, probably not a, a, I mean, certainly not a top target for us, right? Uh, we don't want to be going after Darvish in general, but this is a good lineup over here and they're not going to strike out. So far in very early runs, just 200 PAs, but I do have just this season's um, aggregate hitter numbers in here, and they're only striking out against righties, are the Mets, at just an 18% clip so far. So not not creating at all, but um, with a very, very low strikeout rate. So it could be a little bit lacking in the, in the strikeout department for Darvish here in the early going against the Mets. But good price tag for sure. Scherzer on the other side, uh, as we mentioned, he got blasted by the Brewers, and he has a homer problem. It's like, he, he elevates the baseball. He has always been a fly ball pitcher, and when he doesn't have it and he's just piping it, uh, you know, he can give up some balls over the wall. Now, that said, I mean, it's... Do we really want to be going after the Padres here either? Generally, no. But once again, this is Scherzer, and we could almost certainly expect a, a pretty good bounce from him. Um, now, 10-4, there's plenty of other guys that, that you can play. You can get cheaper on the mound. You don't have to chase this today in a pretty bad matchup. That should keep his ownership down, but in the early runs, we're even seeing he's, he's still garnering 35%. Scherzer always gets played, as he really always should. Um and putting him in about a 30 year teams, I think that's that's probably warranted in general. Um, you'll have to see where you flesh out. I mean, if you if you built a bunch of teams with early projections here, you're probably going to get uh, a boatload of Zach Allen 7100. So um, I think a, at the top tier, you could probably mix in a good healthy bit of Scherzer, but you don't have to go here with a you know. 60 70 percent of your teams today attacking san diego i think that might be a little bit aggressive so um getting with the field you're probably fine at about a third of your teams here um should expect a a pretty decent bounce from scherzer um do we want to play any of the padres on the other side you can play soto if you want um cronenworth probably not uh, off the top of my head i don't recall his price exactly 4400 it's a better price tag it's dropping a little bit i think it's fine uh carp at 3100 if you want to attack Scherzer I think is an okay play but Soto would be would be the number one Trent Grisham strikes out too much and at 4200 I, I don't really like this price tag if he were 
36 or so. I think this would probably be pretty an interesting sort of um, leverage play off of some of this 40% Scherzer ownership, but not super crazy about that. Um, he's really not all that great a hitter. He's in, in the lineup mostly for his defense. Same thing with Runet Odor. He didn't even play all that great a defense, so I don't know what they're doing over here in San Diego. But uh, lefties almost certainly don't really want to be going after Scherzer and stacking against him, but it'll be contrarian, and it's not like Manny can't get into a ball from the right side either. you know. So it uh, would be fine, but um, well down the list in terms of uh, probability outcomes today. So let's uh, let's move on. Cincinnati and Atlanta. Talked about Ashcraft a little bit. 7000 intriguing price tag for him. He's going to pop through this on occasion, but it's it's going to be really difficult for him because he's, he's only striking out 16% of guys in the last season and a half. So um, he'll suppress okay, but he's got to run deep into the baseball game. He doesn't beat himself. He doesn't walk anybody, and he stays off the barrel here. Very little hard contact to the left side, which you'd kind of expect being a being a right-hander, but he gives up 38% hard contact to the right side of the plate, and that's that's pretty worrisome for Ashcraft, g- given that he pitches to a full 83% contact. So um, really need to see an improvement in the in the slider here, sort of the, the slider-cutter combo uh, for Ashcraft in order to really suppress a lot of this contact. Uh, but as of right now, the slider is not that great. He does throw gas, so he throws hard, and he spots the four-seamer, pretty well Uh, so he can work off of that and that'll allow him to stay I don't know sort of on the uh, the median plateau and stay even keeled in counts but still just a 60 percent first pitch strike rate so a little concerning there in that regard as well so 322 average allowed 386 Woba and a 197 ISO all to the right side of the plate. 14% K rate with that 38% hard contact. Leads to the 1.6 homers per nine. Good ground ball rate, which really neutralizes a lot of the power that he would otherwise give up with mostly a a kind of a menial arsenal. Really good four-seamer, but nothing really in the way of of secondary pitches. Similar arsenal to like a, a Lance Lynn, for example. Um... So he needs to really dial in this, the uh, the, the four seamer sinker cutter combo in the fastball department, and then develop the slider a little bit more, and then we can consider getting to some Graham Ashcraft. But in DFS, uh, that we we can't do it until that happens. And he drops this hard contact rate against the right side. This is very worrisome. So that puts us in in Braves territory, of course, with Acuna and Austin Riley. Now they're expensive. You got to pay for these guys. Sean Murphy will be behind the plate. And that's because of Travis Darno. I think he's on the concussion DL right now. Um, you don't really want to deal with Marcelo Zuna. He doesn't strike out a lot. So this, this is an okay value piece here today at 2,800. Um, but for the most part, he just kind of stinks. Uh, same with Eddie Rosario. Another good value piece at 2,200. If he's in the six, you can make these top guys significantly less expensive uh, by playing him in the outfield of 2200 I think that's fine so if you want to get to some Braves here against Ashcraft uh, of course they're going to pop um, in the expected run totals pretty much always and it's going to be pretty rare I think that you're going to see the Braves with under a, a five run total but I think it's an okay spot today getting to Ashcraft with some righties this is in Atlanta uh, also a, a Decent hitters park down here. So, um, but Matt Olson, 5,400, you can play him certainly. Hits righties exceptionally. Uh, as does Ozzy Albies, he'll hit from both sides. So, you don't really have um, any of the sort of outsized risk that you take playing a bunch of, of righties. Um, you know, because Ozzy's a, a, a switch hitter here, it's kind of hard sometimes when you build full stacks of all right handed hitters. Um, because the majority of bullpens, right, are, are right-handed heavy as well. So you play the negative end of the platoon there and sap a little bit of your upside, but you mitigate that a tiny bit with the switch hitters. So Braves are fine here. Uh, on the other side, we do have Bryce Elder, 6,600, as I mentioned. Interesting price tag, closer to a league average strikeout rate for Elder, but it's the walk rate and throwing strike one that is his problem. So um, good sinker, but just 
throwing about 91 or so, 92, and not a whole lot of upside in that regard. But the sinker sinker slider combo, mixing in the cutter a little bit, neutral value for him so far. Uh, not a very good changeup. So vulnerable to the left side as well, and and we can attack that I think with some with some reds in, in particular T.J. Friedel and Jake Fraley. Um, Unfortunately, Jake Fraley up at 5,000 now. This is a little aggressive, but uh, this is a good hitter. And as is TJ Friedel. He's a bit more of a contact hitter, and he's really been mi mixing up the um, arsenal, so to speak, uh, at the plate, bunting a little bit more, really trying to get on base. So with Johnny India, TJ Friedel leading things off for the Reds here, getting to their more power hitters, Jake Fraley, Tyler Stevenson, uh, Jason Vossler, I suppose. Um really versatile top of the lineup here for uh, for the Reds. So I think you can get to Bryce Elder a little bit, not totally immune, uh, really not going to give it up much in the way of average, but we'd, we'd like to get to him mostly with, with lefties. He's been very, very good against the right side of the plate. Huge ground ball rate, 26% K rate, and 052 ISO allowed to the right side. So no hard contact whatever, or whatsoever rather, to speak of. It's just the lefties. 225 average, also a really good number. 303 Woba, pretty good number there as well, but a 167 ISO. So a little bit of a vulnerability there with just a 16% strikeout rate to the lefties, and that's because of the lack of a good changeup. 33, 34% hard contact rate to lefties as well. I think we can attack a little bit of that, maybe with some one-off or short stack pieces and and try and attack some uh, some variance here with Bryce Elder and putting people on base. So it doesn't have a lot of chase in him and really nothing outsized in the way of swinging strikes. Pretty low CSW percentage here at uh, under 27. So overall a pretty um you know mid to back of the rotation type of arm here for Bryce Elder. Nothing overwhelmer overwhelming and overpowering. So I think if you would like to get off the board a little bit, you could target some of the reds probably just in short stacks. I think it's the most equitable, but um I think you can play both sides offensively here, and as a because in general the Reds have a, a pretty minimized, I, I, I suppose, uh, upside in, in terms of raw power. Uh, when this lineup goes cold, they're going to go really cold because they have Will Myers just as an anchor right in the middle. It's a good price for him, but um, I mean, hopefully he can figure it out this season. Otherwise. Uh, might be seeing the end of Will Myers in a big league uniform. Um, they do have a little bit from the left side, but uh, Tyler Stevenson and Johnny India leave some on the table against righties, and uh, they're, they're not cheap. So um, Stevenson back to 4,700 today after 4,000 uh, the day before and 4,700 the, the day before that. So a lot of price variance here with Stevenson in particular. Same thing with Johnny India at 55. So not my favorite to get to full stacks of the Reds here, but um, definitely playable if you want to get uh, get off the board a little bit. All right, moving on, Seattle and the Cubs. Luis Castillo on the mound, 9,600. Good price for him. Uh, I think this median projection so far in the early runs looks, looks about right. Uh, maybe a tick too high, but the Cubs, they're overall a pretty weak lineup. In the early going here, striking out at a full 29% against righties. Very small sample and just 80 PAs. But um, that probably is, is a decent foreshadowing of how the Cubs are going to perform this season. Still waiting on Seiya Suzuki to come back from the oblique that he tweaked, I think. Um, and he'll make the lineup... You know, like he'll solidify it a pretty good bit, but uh, overall, pretty low upside for the Cubs in general. Of course, Nico, he's not going to strike out. He's going to get on base a little bit. Uh, this guy's a good hitter, and I'm glad that they're giving him a real extended run here at the top of the list. Um, Dansby's got a good bit of pop, of course, but you want to pay 5700 for Dansby Swanson against Luis Castile? No, thank you. Same thing with Ian Happ. We want him more from the left side, definitely. But uh, at 52 against a really good arm here against Castillo, uh, it's, a, it's a little shady. Cody Bellinger has pop, of course, and if he runs into a ball, Luis Castillo can float the—I uh, say float. He can flatten out 
the the four seamer and the sinker a little bit to lefties. Historically, that's kind of been his issue. He's really figured it out in the last year and a half. Uh, so that does give Bellinger a little bit of upside at that price. But man, he he whips off a tee. Um, does Bellinger? Mechanics are still way off, so he's going to strike out a lot in this matchup uh, in general because. Castillo to both sides of the plate, 25% K rate to lefties, 30% nearly to the right side. So uh, a lot of suppression here, no ISO allowed. It's really the the variance to left-handers that you, that you can uh, run into a little bit with uh, Luis. So that's really all we're generally worried about uh, in early runs. He's not seeing as much ownership as Scherzer, and I think he probably should. This is a better matchup. And... The numbers for Castillo are pretty similar to Scherzer, and he gets far more ground balls. He's not not a fly ball pitcher, and in Chicago, we definitely don't want to be doing that, but uh, not sure we're going to have any weather concerns necessarily, but um, he's not going to give up near as much in the air as, as Scherzer will, for example. So I think this could be a, a reasonable pivot if you want to get some more exposure to a Luis Castillo as opposed to a Scherzer and a Far better matchup. I think it's a, a reasonable construction. Drew Smiley on the other side, 7,800. Oof. Uh, really don't like this price. Uh, it's intriguing at very low ownership. I'm seeing 7% on him right now. I think the median projection seems a, a little okay. It's kind of sneaky high here. And it's all right, but the problem that we run into with Smiley is that he really doesn't have any of the strikeout stuff that he showed a couple of seasons ago when we played him a lot at really inexpensive price tags. Um, he's still got a, a fly ball problem, really to both sides. I mean, he's about neutral, at least in what he displayed in the short 25-inning sample last season, but still Leaning heavily to the, I say heavily, um, you know, it's 090 ground ball to fly ball to the right side, but there's more barrel contact to the righties for sure, and that leads to more homers. Absolutely. It's a 180 ISO really to both sides of the plate, and that makes Smiley attackable for sure. Um, this list up here for the Mariners, they're going to be able to platoon against lefties very, very well, and of course, they've got Julio, Ty France, Gino Suarez. Hitting from the right side, Cal Raleigh will hit from the right side. Probably, I mean, his left side is, is definitely the better side, but uh, could very well see a Tom Murphy in the list today. Tay Oscar, of course, hits lefties great. And a 5,100, intriguing price tag here for Tay Oscar today. Uh, I think this is a decent play. A.J. Pollock, of course, he'll be in there um, platooning against lefties as long as he's healthy. So I think we can... Definitely get to the Mariners here today. Early runs, really only seeing 8 10% on them, and the it's really kind of uh, inflated by the Julio ownership that you naturally see. So uh, if you want to get after Drew Smiley here, he's not going to throw it by anybody, just a 20% aggregate K rate. Throw strikes, so he's going to throw it over the plate and, and get you to hit it. Um, but if he's up in the strike zone at all, these power numbers could really come to fruition for the Mariners. And... They could put up a good number against Smiley here. Um, in the in the way of like a, an applied run total, I mean, they're pushing five here. So this is kind of sneaky given some of the other offenses and the spots. Uh, of course, we have Coors down here. You got the Angels. You got maybe some Texas who we'll get to in a minute. Um, Arizona, of course. Atlanta, who we talked about. They may be quite off the board today. Uh, so if you want to get to some Seattle, I think it's a reasonable attempt to go after Kind of a vulnerable price tag here at Drew Smiley. It looks a little bit fishy at that number. Um, okay, I think we covered everything in that game. Let's move on to uh, KC in Texas. Royals here. Oof, still still cold. Um, they did take two or three against the Giants, so that's encouraging, I suppose. Um, but really nothing in the way of uh, upside to, to speak up for the Royals, of course. Uh, they get Andrew Heaney. We'll talk to talk about him in a minute. Let's start with Zach Grinky here at 5,800. Um, you know, we know Grinky. We know that we're pretty much never going to be playing Grinky. Uh, he just he has a 13% K rate and he throws. Ma he's maxing out at 89 miles an hour. It's even a tick or two lower this season than it was last year. So, um, but still suppressing contact. He's he's throwing his 43 mile an hour curveball or whatever he's doing. 
Um, and he, he's still surviving. It, so it's uh, it's frustrating sometimes stacking against Granky, but you're going to see, um, you should see a good bit of ownership on, on the Rangers today. If you don't, um, I think that's a pretty decent spot to jump on board. Now, in terms of DFS scores, the Rangers have been very poor so far to start the season. They're 5-4, and four, though. So, I mean, that's great. Um, but I think we could probably attack Zach Greinke with some low ownership on the on the Rangers today. Uh, Marcus Semien starting to see the baseball a little bit better. Got into, I think, yesterday, 2-4, for 3-5, for five, something like that. Uh, Corey Seager been pretty cold to start start the season as well, but um, excellent hitter, and he's going to heat up eventually. And a guy throwing just meatballs here in Zach Greinke could, uh, could very well be a way to kind of get him going. Um, over the last couple of seasons, I know displayed here, just at 099 ISO to lefties has Granke and a 141 ISO to the right side. So he has exhibited in terms of power a little bit more of a reverse split, but it's nothing outsized, right? 330 Woba to righties, given the, he's throwing really, I mean, softer than a lot of high school arms anymore. Um, that's pretty damn respectable, if you ask me. Uh, he is in the air a little bit against the right side, so we'll give up a dinger or two, but for the most part, uh, the numbers are, are pretty good. That doesn't mean he's he's not attackable, uh, of course. It's it's not that he's going to walk people, and he stays off the barrel, so it's he's inducing a lot of soft contact, and you know, 28, 30% to both sides of the plate. Good numbers for Grinky, but even at 5,800, he just doesn't have any tournament upside whatsoever. Uh, if you do something crazy and stack the whole country up at 5K plus, like the Braves and the Angels or something wild, maybe you could play him in, in cash. Because you could squeeze 15, 14, 15 points out of Grinky, and that could get you there in cash, but just no upside in tournaments. Um, but in tournaments, I think we would like to be taking shots on, on the Rangers, this lineup is going to start to explode, and when they heat up, they're going to get going, and they're going to put up some real crooked numbers. Nate Lowe, 4,300 at um, at first base here. Pretty good, damn good price, I think. Very low ownership so far. Uh, Adolis Garcia, 47. Not super intrigued about this price tag, um, or with this price tag, but he's playable, definitely in stacks. You want to get to the, the top four, top five probably, Mixing in Josh Smith, hoping to see a bit of a breakout season from him, but uh, he is leaving quite a bit on the table so far. Jonah Heim hits from both sides behind the plate if you want to play him. Uh, I think that's perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, do you want to play Mitch Garver at, I, I think, what, 4,600 or 40? Yeah, he's 4,600 today. Um, he'll be down at the bottom of the lineup. You can play him in stacks for sure because he's definitely got – Probably the most raw home run power upside of anybody on the team. Um, and he's a fly ball hitter, so he can get into a ball here against Granky. He hits righties pretty well, to be quite honest. Does Garver, so if you want to play him in stacks, I think that's fine. Probably not as a, as a one-off. Um, but I like Texas a little bit here. I think at lower ownership today with all of these other offenses, I think you could probably... Um, sprinkle in some Rangers on the other side Andrew Heaney on the mound 7900 he got he got beat to shreds in his first outing and it's with hard contact he just didn't throw it by anybody and he, he threw it right over the middle of the plate really to both sides and 36 percent hard contact to lefties 37 percent hard contact to righties 2.3 homers per nine to the right side I mean a 256 ISO you can attack him now, with, with the Royals, they're going to strike out for sure in the early going here. Just 70 PAs against lefties, but uh, they have looked miserable. They're striking out at 31% clip. Now, that's that's going to come down, definitely, um, as they get Bobby Witt and Salvi and, and some of these guys going. Eddie Olivares hits lefties pretty well. right? Franny, he's going to strike out, but power numbers probably going to round into form for him a little bit. Matt Duffy, they even been playing him in the five or six hole or something. Uh, he's always hit lefties okay. Hunter Dozier as well. So they can platoon, and they can make it a little sticky on Andrew Heaney. So I think you can play both sides of this game. Heaney you can always play in tournaments because of a 34% K rate. 34% K rate. And 7,900 
7900 the price is attainable. Um, you can play him with a cheaper Zach Allen. You could play him with a Darvish uh, or something like that uh, and really chase some raw price upside with uh, a very healthy strikeout rate. Throw strike one at an incredible rate here, 69% nearly, uh, but he's on the barrel at a full 12%. This is awful, and it's really to both sides of the plate, as we mentioned, the hard contact numbers. So um, 060 ground ball to fly ball to righties, it's just it's terrible. So you can play both sides. You can play some of the Royals. I'd probably prefer just to get to shorter stacks, but, um, I mean, you could – you could play full stacks of the Royals. Play a play lefty or two as well. And like a Vinny Pascantino, you could play him at first base if you want to. It's not bad uh, against Andrew Heaney, who's just going to pipe the baseball and hasn't really figured it out because he's still only a two-pitch guy with a bad change that he very rarely uses. So um, this doesn't have an out pitch against the right side of the plate, and that's going to be a, you know, a difficult situation against any major league team, even if it is the Royals. So I think you can play Texas and the Royals for sure, um, but definitely some Heaney in tournaments because the upside is just way too high. All right, to Coors Field we go, St. Louis and Colorado. Cardinals been kind of disappointing as well. They uh, they got a little bit to Eric Lauer, um, not so much Freddie Peralta yesterday. Uh, he tore them apart pretty good. Steven Matz on the, on the mound for them today. Um, 7,300, all right, like, I hate playing pitchers at Coors Field, but we, we've we actually been able to get there with a few of them um, in the early going this season. Rockies are going to be bad, man. This is just a really weak lineup overall, as we kind of mentioned at the outset. Jerry Profar at the top of the list, um, not a ton of upside from Jerry. He's very streaky, and he'll when he gets going, it's going to be mostly from the left side, but he'll... You know he can he's got a little bit of pop from the right side as well. Um, Chris Bryant he's been fantastic to start the year. I talked about him having a, a lot of upside here at Coors Field when he's healthy. If he can stay on the field, he's going to provide a, a good bit of value for the Rockies here um, as a cog in the in the middle of this lineup. At 5400, I think this is an okay shot to take. Yeah, you know, he's only going to see about 10 15 percent ownership. Um, that's maybe a little bit elevated on a, on a full eight-game slate that we have, but not terribly so. And he's playing at Coors Field, and he's a good hitter. Against Steven Matz, who has issues to the right side of the plate. 282 average is a big number. 348 Woba, also a pretty big number, with a 206 ISO to righties. Now, 24% K rate, so a little bit of upside in that regard, but full 2-0 homers per nine because he's a neutral ground ball to fly ball at Coors Field, that is not going to play very well because he's throwing the sinker. The sinker is just a bad pitch. Uh, two right-handers really don't know why anybody is throwing a, a two-seamer unless they can really bury it and get it down in the strike zone. Steven Matz is not one of these guys. So uh, has always been vulnerable to the right side. So if you want to get to some of these righties here, Chris Bryant, Ellerice Montero has plenty of pop. He's going to strike out a ton. But at 3,100, I mean, he's a very inexpensive third base play at Coors Field. Uh, Jonathan Daza doesn't really have a lot of upside, but uh, he's got some sort of on-base ability here to outperform a 3,200 price tag as well. Elias Diaz certainly has pop. He's a fine catcher play, probably elevated in early ownership runs um, at about 10%. Not crazy about that, but you can, I think, play both sides here. And given how much the Rockies are going to strike out, not so much against lefties so far in about 280 PAs this year, just 22%. So they'll be a little sticky there, but um, Stephen Matt still has well above average strikeout numbers to both sides of the plate. Um, always been pretty good against lefties and we just mostly want to attack him against righties but at 7300 I think there's upside for sure at this price and nobody's going to play him so he's a decent tournament play you don't have to play all that much of him to get some leverage on the field you can get 6-8% and and I think that will offer you some unique constructions and builds uh to get to and really keep you off the board um to the, the field. On the other side, we have the Rockies and Herman Marquez. He's been okay to start the season. He got 
hit around a little bit in his last start, I, I believe. Um, 8,500 for Marquez today. I, we're just not doing it against Cardinals. Uh, they're going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and in the early going here, let's see, 290 PAs against righties this season so far. Um 19.5% strikeout rate and an aggregate 10% walk rate. 346 Woba with a 114 WRC plus so far. So small sample still, but starting to converge a little bit. And Rockies, er, excuse me, the uh, the Cardinals going to be pretty good against um, really both both sides here, uh, righties and lefties on the mound. So uh, Herman Marquez, we really don't want to be going after him. He's only got a 19.5% K rate himself. So uh, no thank you. Throwing strikes, but and potentially figuring out the fastball command uh, compared to last year uh, a little bit. Slider really needs to work on this and, and continue to bury this uh, down in the strike zone. That'll increase the ground ball rate for him. He's still at about a buck fifty ground ball to fly ball. So do we want to go after him with righties? Really only fly ball hitters, and that would uh, that'd be Goldschmidt, Arenado. They can both lift the ball, of course. Um, Tyler O'Neill, 4,300. He's a fine Coors play. He's going to see 15% ownership. Not the greatest batted ball matchup necessarily, but, um, I mean, Herman Marquez, absolutely attackable. 221 ISO to the lefties, 198 ISO to righties, 1.7 and 1.4 homers per nine to lefties and righties. The hard contact really, though, it, it's because of the lack of fastball command, Still throwing the sinker as well, so that really increases the hard contact to lefties, 37.5%. It's very worrisome. And to righties, not not able to spot the four-seamer either at 35% hard contact. So uh, it's fastball command and, and location for him that's really been the problem that and, and plagued him for uh, about almost nearly two years going back now. So um, certainly attackable. Can you play the Cardinals? Uh, absolutely. They're seeing pretty healthy and blanket 15% ownership right now, uh, kind of across the board. But good price tags here. And play Alec Burleson. He'll probably be in the lineup again today, 2,900 in the two. Uh, Brandon Donovan, 45, very playable leadoff piece. And don't shy away from Goldschmidt and Arenado. you got to pay for Goldschmidt, 59. Definitely not my favorite price-adjusted play of the day uh, at that number. But Arenado, 52, coming back to Coors Field. Um, is perfectly playable and very good hitter. You'll see reduced ownership on Arenado um, against righties just in general. But uh, he doesn't strike out, and he's a damn good hitter. Nolan Gorman, 3,400, makes these guys a little bit more attainable and cheaper. Tommy Edmond, if you if you want to wrap around uh, something down at the bottom of the lineup, could be fine. Jordan Walker, plenty of pop as well at 3,000. So all of these guys are playable, and you can get contrarian a little bit with the Cardinals. Um, you don't have to just eat all the all the chalk on the on the typical guys here, like the Donovans and the um, and the Burlesons at the top of the lineup. So I think we can play offense here and maybe a little bit of Steven Matz, uh, but no no Rockies really for me. Maybe some Chris Bryant. Um, that's really kind of my favorite to be quite honest. And and I'm not even wild about the price tag there. So kind of off the board stack if you want to get to the Rockies, sure. Uh, because if, if Steve Matz is bad, he can be bad. Okay, moving on, Washington and the Angels. Washington just leaving Coors Field, and they've got Patrick Corbin going on the mound. Um, we've got some noisy ownership values come through in the models, as we mentioned at the outset on, on Corbin so far. Um, not sure what's going on there. We'll see. I, I, as far as I know, like DK still has him projected. Um, Fangraph still has him projected projected as well so uh not sure what's going on maybe just a data error so we'll have updates uh throughout the day nevertheless you're not playing corbin even at 5400 uh against the angels um we're gonna we're definitely gonna like the angels a, a pretty good bit uh they're going to be popular don't have a list in here so I don't have ownership in front of me uh but they they will be popular everybody that that gets patrick corbin on the mound is popular so um no strikeout rate, and that's really how we want to attack the Angels a lot of the time. Only 18% in aggregate, and it's really 17, 17 and a half to both sides, to be honest. Throwing strike one and throwing it wh just right over the plate. Um, so we've talked about this with Corbin. Nothing's really changed so far. Still getting beat up pretty hard. 
326 average to the right side is is astronomical. Uh, 392 WOBA with a 205 ISO. So they're actually hitting for a bit more average than they probably should. Um, and, and really not enough ISO, right? Uh, I guess a better way to say that would be um, less raw power than they probably should given the raw batting average numbers. Um, but 1.8 homers per nine still for Patrick Corbin, um, and he's just on the barrel at north of 11%. So no thank you. That's not a, a recipe that we want to be attacking the Angels with. Um, obviously, that's Trout, Taylor Ward, um, Brandon Drury, pretty well priced down here tonight at 3,600, first and second base eligible. You play Hunter Renfro, 47. It's not the, still not crazy about this price tag, but uh, loads of pop against against lefties for sure. Anthony Rendon was back in the list yesterday. He should be back tonight also. So they're they're expensive for the top three guys: Ward, Trout, and Otani. Don't fade Otani. Um, but the the cheaper guys down at the bottom of the lineup, they'll make this more attainable as well. You can play Urshela. 41 in the 8-hole, I'm really not crazy about. But they should be able to turn the lineup over here pretty good. Uh, you can play Ohapi behind the plate, 3,500, that's fine. And if you want to play Renhifo, if he's in the list. Um, they they look like they may be trying to platoon him a little bit. I don't know why. He was fantastic for them from both sides last year. He let off uh, for a lot of the time while Taylor Ward was out. So uh, you could play pretty much everybody here for the Angels tonight, and you're going to be able to get contrarian with it, I think. Um, but you're... Absolutely want to be playing Trout and and, and Taylor Ward. Um, but mix in some Brandon Drury and Hunter Renfro, Rendon, of course, and get some lefties as well. They'll have some opportunity, I think, to get some really quality ABs, like a Renhifo, uh, and definitely Shohei. So um, it's going to be a little off the... I don't, not off the board. They're going to be chalky, number one. But... Um, some of these angel stacks will be a little off the board. Like a couple of these guys are not going to be played. Renhifo probably won't be played at all. So um, we definitely like attacking Patrick Corbin, and that's really not going to change today. Josie Suarez on the other side for the Angels, 6,900. Uh, median projection so far seems okay. Um, I think Josie could could pop a little bit and outperform this price tag in general. Um, pretty weak four-seamer and a pretty weak change. Even though there's a good 10 mile an hour velo delta here, just throwing about 93, so this would be good the change up if the four seamer were good. And but really, not a lot of value here, just pretty straight. Uh, not a ton of movement on it for him. Um, but you know, plus slider, plus ish slider, and throwing the sinker a little bit. So for the most part, pretty neutral uh, in terms of production allowed to both sides of the plate. Uh, naturally a little bit more vulnerable to righties, even though earlier in his career he was, you know, before he really started digging in with the slider, he was a bit more susceptible to the left side. So uh, that has subsided quite a bit over the last couple of seasons, but um, now we're seeing a bit more of a traditional split uh, against Josie Suarez. 265 average, 332 Woba, 180 ISO, 23% K rate. And a 1.4 homers per nine to the right side. 32% hard contact. So anything over 30% we start to take note of. Uh, and a 9% aggregate barrel rate. So he's a little susceptible here to, to getting popped. Now, the, the Nationals, we're probably going to want to attack in general. Uh, with lefties, maybe not so much. They're coming out of Coors Field and all seeing the baseball pretty well. Uh, I think the best price adjusted play from the nationals today is stone garrett he's still very cheap and he had a killer day um over the week i believe on saturday uh where he he just went nuts four for five or something crazy uh, alex call is going to hit lefties pretty well jamer didn't strike out against lefties um so some plus matchups so far obviously joey Maness is five thousand you can play him for sure caber ruiz behind the plate you can play him uh, lane thomas as well they have Michael Chavis, who has a lot of pop, who will strike out a ton, but um, they're going to be a little bit sticky in general against lefties. So at 6,900, I think this is an interesting tournament play if you want to full stack the Angels and correlate with some Josie Suarez. Uh, I think that's okay. And he's a 
pretty much ignored right now. Uh, I think this is reasonable. Now, the, the strikeout rate itself in aggregate going to leave a little bit to be desired. Um, but overall, he's, he's going to suppress just fine. He can go six innings here, seven innings even, um, you know, in, in some outcomes. And I think that's a, a perfectly reasonable tournament play to – uh, to throw some Josie Suarez into your pools and, and try and decrease your or increase your leverage, I suppose, to the rest of the field and all those other angel stacks. So I think it's fine. He's got five pitches here that he can work with and he can navigate a, an overall pretty weak lineup. They will be sticky, though. Uh, so keep all of that in mind. And if you want to get off the board, um, mention this a couple of times. I Against, you know, two other sides of... Uh, the a, a very popular stack. Um, I like playing. I, I I like playing the other side of the game uh, often. Now Patrick Corbin it doesn't mean I want to fade the Angels, right? So often what I'll do is uh, I'll play the other side of the game and and fade the really popular stack. We don't want to be doing that today necessarily. Certainly if you're building a bunch of teams, you don't want to try that. But um, I do think that there is upside here at these price tags for Washington, maybe in a short stack or something, to get to Josie Suarez and and continue. Um, you know, they're sort of good series that they had at, at Coors Field down here in, in Anaheim. So it's, I think that's playable. Uh, so no pitching in most scenarios here for me. Maybe a little bit of Josie Suarez, but um, for the most part, just offense. Okay, Milwaukee and the Diamondbacks. Just had some news come in on the Diamondbacks. We'll get to that in a sec. Wade, Wiley, Wade Miley on the mound uh, for the Brewers. 7,700. I mean, I'm not sure I want to go after this. Just a 17% K rate. I don't think there's any upside for him in tournaments at this price tag. Like, sure, could he pop for 20 or whatever? Yeah, I mean, okay. But I really don't generally like playing Wade Miley. Um, ground ball rate is, is still pretty strong for him. But the strikeout rate is just not there. So without a combination of the two, um, it makes him difficult to play. And certainly in tournaments, there's just a v lack of upside. And against the Diamondbacks, I don't really want to target them. They've been fantastic here in the early part of the season. Um, now, you do see the uh, red O right here. This was the news I was alluding to. Kyle Lewis did just get excuse me, uh, placed on the DL Um with an illness, I think. So uh, it seems crazy, um, but who knows, um, to be going on the DL. But I really would have liked to have played him today at 2100 uh, This is a fantastic price, and his problem has really been strikeouts, and Wade Miley's not going to strike him out. So uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get that. But these guys are going to be able to platoon pretty well against both sides of the plate. Uh, excuse me, both handedness both sides of a handedness? How about that? Um, both lefties and righties. You know, let's put it that way. And Cattell Marte, of course, hits from both sides. Had a good day over the weekend. Uh, Lourdes, 39. He, he also had a couple of really good games. Christian Walker was really kind of left out of the party. Uh, I like getting to him at, at first base here. 3,700. He's always got plenty of power. Pay off that price tag. Longo at third base. 3,500. Still hits lefties exceptionally well. Corbin Carroll, he's still too cheap for the upside that he offers. 3,100, I'll play him against lefties, certainly. Um, the speed is just, like, it It really um, decreases the the risk that you take uh, when taking a hit in the um, in the platoon split here. Uh, but Nick Ahmed also has hit lefties historically very, very well. Super cheap price tag here. So if you want to get to... Some of the Diamondbacks, again, I think it's perfectly reasonable. And they've got another sneaky kind of 4.8 run total here. So uh, I think they could pop against Wade Miley. And some of these guys, like the Christian Walkers, the Evan Longorias, uh, they'll be able to lift the baseball a little bit. Uh, fly ball hitters against lefties, and that's kind of what we want uh, against a ground ball lean in, in Wade Miley over here. So cutter change. Combination here with a little bit of a four-seamer and some other junk um, that Miley's throwing keeps him, you know, m mostly serviceable as a mid to back end to the of the rotation starter. Um, doesn't give up a whole lot of power, so don't be surprised if you stack D-backs after their explosions this weekend 
and they kind of shit the bed. But um, I think we can get to some some offense once again here for uh, Arizona. Zach Gallon on the other ma- on the other side though uh, on the mound for the D-backs, 7100. The price is just too cheap. Um, he has not been good to start the year, but I did. I, I don't think I really care to be quite honest. Um, I think we kind of have to at some points. Uh, unless there's something drastically wrong with either the arsenal or the guy's hurt or his velo's down like five ticks or something, uh, we got to keep an eye out for this guy. I do believe his velocity was down, but um, it, it, in the early part of the season, you're going to see velocity um, really pretty variant with a lot of guys. They're going to be down a couple miles an hour pretty often. So, like I said, if we're you know, it, as soon as we get into their, like, third start, maybe, uh, fourth start, you start to see the velo tick up again and as they get into the uh, the heart of the season um, and into their routine. So at 7,100 here uh, against the Brewers, Brewers still get to strike out a, a decent bit. Not so much so far this season. 250 PAs against righties so far with just a 22% K rate. Um, creating pretty well, but that's really buoyed a lot by all of the innings that they in, in at bats that they got against like Scherzer for example when they hit him for uh, three or four home runs or whatever it was so it, their numbers definitely noisy so far here in the early going they're gonna they're gonna pop and they're gonna platoon very well um Christian Yelich actually hit a ball over the wall like what are we doing um feels like three years ago 4800 still not I'm not playing him um in general Zach Gallon's been excellent against left against lefties 148 average allowed uh, 215 Woba and a 105 ISO with a 28% K rate to lefties. No hard contact. If we wanted to get to Zach Gallen, it was a little bit with the four-seamer when he kind of lost command sometimes. And that generally, if you can't spot the four-seamer, it's still okay against opposite-handed hitters. But same-handed hitters you are a little bit vulnerable uh, in that regard. But he's still throwing a, a solid four pitches here. And they're all still, despite the cold start for him uh providing a good bit of value plus value on, on really all four of them if you consider a four percent um exposure to the arsenal or the slider in the arsenal as as a fifth pitch i mean sure so uh, he's still got plenty to navigate um a team that will strike out in general over here in the brewers and a 7,100, like I said, he's just flat underpriced uh, for the upside. He's got a 27% K rate. And the only thing we've got to be concerned with is is the potential uh, concerning velo drop. If that doesn't start to normalize pretty quickly, then it would make Gallon uh, at just a 93, 94 uh, pretty attackable um, on the other side. So if you want to take shots with the Brewers, team that's got a lot of power, Wink here at 3200 probably in the two-hole. He's going to make this $4,800 ridiculous price tag for Yelich a little bit easier to get to. You can play Rowdy at 35 um, Nobody's going to be playing these guys because everybody's going to be playing Zach Allen. So if you want to get off the board and take a shot there in some deeper tournament stuff, play some Milwaukee. Um, it's a pretty damn good leverage stack. They have a lot of power here. Garrett Mitchell has been great to start the season. Bryce Terang has been great as well. A lot of power from all of these guys. Willie Adamas, he'll strike out, but he hits right. He's just fine still. Um, good pop behind the plate with Willie Contreras. So uh, plenty of opportunity to get to the Brewers here if you want to leverage stack against Zach Gallen. Uh, for the most part, I, I'm on the Diamondback side here. But if you want to, to get really wild, go ahead and play a Brewer stack or something. Uh, okay, last game of the day. Dodgers and the Giants should be a really good pitching matchup here tonight. Julio Urias on the mound for the Dodgers, 9,400. They need to get some length out of him because Michael Grove yesterday had to eat it, and like he wore 13 or 12 runs or whatever it was. Um, Dimebacks tore him up pretty good. So they, the Dodgers' bullpen has also not been stellar so far, uh, and they've had to eat some innings because their starters have not been great. So... Um, Let's see if they can get a little bit, a uh, little bit of depth out of Urias today. 94, I think, is a perfectly fine price tag. 16% ownership as of right now. He's really kind of hovers in this range, pretty much always, unless he like gets to Rockies at home on a 
five gamer or something. That's when he really pops in the ownership department. But um, I think there's always pretty good value on Urias. He goes deep into games, deep enough, um, you know, five and two thirds because he's pretty efficient. Three really good pitches. Would like to see him eke a little bit more value uh, out of the cutter, but he doesn't throw a slider. So he's he's mostly on the, the four-seamer curveball change train. And if he wants to introduce this cutter, um, I think he should also add a slider, but that'll probably come later in his career. Doesn't really need all that much more at the moment. Um, right now, his real his only real vulnerability is a bit of a reverse split, and it's, it's power to lefties. Um, he'll pipe the, the four-seamer occasionally to them, and he's got impeccable control, so uh, when they do get to him, it's usually just a solo homer variety. One and a half homers per nine to the left side of the plate. I'm not going to go after him with the Giants, uh, even though these guys do lift the baseball and get it in the air. I'm not all that attract, attracted to like attacking an 055 ground ball to fly ball ratio. Uh, we'd want more line drive hitters. Um, if we're going to play any lefties against Urias at all to begin with. And do we really want to? 178 average, 236 Woba allowed with a 25% K rate. I'm not too wild about it. Um, but the control is, has always been there for Urias. He, he's a fantastic young arm, even though he feels like he's been in the league for about 12 seasons now. 6% walk rate, 6% barrel rate. So it doesn't, doesn't beat himself. And if Dave Roberts just lets him go deep into a baseball game and throw more than 80 pitches, that's where we can really eke out a good bit of value. As it is, if he's only throwing 85 pitches, 9,400, you do kind of need him to outperform and and really stifle um, the opposing offense, really not give up anything. doesn't normally, but you also kind of need him to to get there in the, in the strikeout department. So, um, which is fine. He has plenty of upside there, 24, 25% K rate to both sides of the plate. So throw strikes. And, uh, I think is a very good option. If you want to get to a, uh, some depressed ownership here, you want to play gallon in Urias or something like that. Sure. It's fine. Um, in the, in the kind of late slate, if you want to attack Urias, he'll probably be markedly more popular on the night slate, for example. But, um, I think this is a, a pretty good play on the mound here. Median projection, about 17 points. Looks right about accurate. I don't want to go after him with the Giants. Logan Webb on the other side. High ground ball rate from, from Logan, as we've discussed. Uh, 7,400. This is an intriguing price tag as well. And they're back in San Francisco. It's going to be 55, 60 degrees. We're kind of getting into that sort of uh, weather zone, if you will, over at Oracle um, in the Bay. And... I think this is it could be reasonable. Now generally we don't I don't want to go after the Dodgers. I very rarely go after the Dodgers. But I think at this price tag, I think there's a little bit of upside. What we're really concerned with is the Dodgers are gonna platoon. And that's really the negative side of the platoon for Logan Webb in terms of raw strikeout rate, just a nineteen percent there. Uh the suppression metrics, three ten, three twenty five expected um ERA and XFIP. As, long, as well as the average WOBA and ISO numbers, really to both sides of the plate are, are awesome. Uh, 235 ground ball to fly ball ratio. He keeps everything on the ground, doesn't walk anybody, and stays off of the barrel. So there's very little hard contact. I mean, 31% to lefties, but whatever. Um, at a 2.8 ground ball to fly ball ratio, if everything's hit on the ground, you don't really care. So uh, I think there's upside for him to outperform this price tag. And I think a median projection of about 15 points is probably fine. If you do want to get really off the board, if you're playing some very chalky stacks, consider getting to some Logan Webb here, maybe 10% clip or so. I think it's fine getting to the field and getting that much exposure to him. Um, because he's still a really good arm, and he's leading and anchoring their rotation. So going after the Dodgers, who have been kind of cold offensively to... I mean, they're putting a bronze here to the Dodgers, but... Um, they, you might be able to to get to them uh, a little bit on the mound here while they're still kind of getting into their stride here in the early part of the season. Um, not something we're going to do all that often, but at 7400 I think it's a work, workable price tag. You don't need to do this, of course, today, but uh, I think it's uh, perfectly reasonable. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for the breakdown. Um, briefly went over the... Uh, 
four game turbo slate, but let's go over stacks quickly. Don't really want offense much at all here, but if you want to stack the Mets uh, against Darvish, I think that's okay. If you want to stack San Diego, I, I, well, I don't think it's really okay. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be doing it going after Scherzer, um, but a, a hedge piece or two with a Juan Soto uh, or a Matt Carpenter at a cheap price, I think those are viable construction. Short stacks here probably for me for Cincinnati. Uh, against uh, Bryce Elder, and full stack, sure, against Graham Ashcraft if you want. Um, you can include the lefties, even though he's a little bit better against the lefties uh, for the Braves. Uh, like Seattle, a decent bit here against Drew Smiley, and mostly Luis Castillo. Uh, Kansas City of Texas, uh, I like Texas a little bit here. We're going to go after Zach Greinke. Um, he's going to get blasted eventually. It, one of these days, he'll... he'll you know, hang an eight spot on you in the, um, or, you know, gift you with an eight spot or something in the, in the second inning. Uh, and really waiting for Texas to kind of break out here. Uh, St. Louis, Colorado, offense for sure. Maybe some deep tournament pieces of, uh, of Steven Matz. No pitching for me, really. Um, short, short exposures, maybe, on Josie Suarez, but mostly just the Angels. Uh, and off the board, Washington stack. It's it's playable as well. Brewers, if you want to stack against the most popular pitcher on the day and Zach Gallen, go ahead, uh, especially if he's got veto problems. And But Zach Gallen on the other side, um, he's just flat underpriced if the veto is not an issue. Uh, like Arizona, too, uh, to kind of get to a little bit of Wade Miley here as well. And we just talked about the Dodgers in San Francisco. Probably no offense for me here in the late game and mostly just pitching. So that's where we are. Um, we will update the projections throughout the day. Once again, noisy ownership uh, to start. So keep an eye out for what's going on here. Um, and that's really it. Good luck, guys.